on today's ProPresenter show, making interactive games in ProPresenter. Hi, and welcome again to the ProPresenter show. This is the show where every week I help you with some tutorials, tips, and tricks for ProPresenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. So, this is the result of someone asking me a, store, uh, a question on one of my previous tutorials where I was talking about uh, the bulleted list reveal. So, here's her problem. She wanted to do a two-column bulleted list reveal. Not a problem. You can basically do a two-column bulleted list reveal using um, element transitions. Except, she wants to do it as a game. So it's two teams of six members each, um, and they're kids, and so they try and get ping-pong balls into a bucket, and for each ping-pong ball, then a portion of a Bible verse is revealed. No problem. You see, except maybe one time Team A wins and their side is revealed, and then the next time Team B wins and theirs is revealed. And this isn't just, you know, they compete on the first one, and then it goes one and then one, then they compete on the second one, and then it goes two and then one. Not like that. It could go three, then one, then four, then the next fourth one, and then two. You know, so it could be staggered. So it's very nonlinear. How do you do that in ProPresenter? Well, let's head over to my computer. We'll take a look at that, and we'll take a look at um, a couple other games that you can improve on and create variations with if you need to do nonlinear reveals in ProPresenter, which is basically all this really is. This tutorial is actually inspired by Sarah, Sarah Graff here, who uh, asked, thanks for the tutorial, wondering if there was a way to do what T-Hawks, one of the other commenters, described, but in a way that tracks which team has scored a point first. I'm trying to set up a game for kids where one team does an action in the room which activates text to appear on the screen in a race against the other team. So, I further down you can see that we had some more discussion. But basically, she needs to make ProPresenter do a non-linear reveal of text. So, how do you go about do, doing that? Well, let me show you what I came up with. And uh, this isn't original to me. There were some other um, tutorials using ProPresenter for games, and so I'll leave links below in the show notes. But basically, we're starting off here. I could use a motion background, but I'm just going to keep it black because I'm using the version of ProPresenter that uh, has the watermark on it, and it just makes it easier. So... First thing that we're going to do is we're going to assume that we've got two teams. In her case, uh, she told me that it was going to be a team of uh, five boys and five girls, or six boys and six girls, whatever. And as they did the action, they would need to reveal a different thing. So first off, I created this slide that says boys and girls on the top, and it has a countdown timer. Now, these cues start the timer, show the timer, and then uh, clear any previous props, which I've got down here. You might have it uh, anchored to the top. I prefer to have it floating, so that's why I've got that there. So when I click on this, this shows up and the timer starts. Okay, so let's say that the boys scored the first point, and then the girls are right there after. Then the girls catch up and take the lead. Then the girls, they're looking really good. The boys got a little slow here, and now they're trying to catch up. Oh, it's even. 
and boys, girls, and girls win. And so then I can uh, go down here and click girls win. So how did I do that? Well, it's actually uh, pretty simple. I showed you that I was using props, so I'm going to go to props by using control P for props, or I could go to uh, view props here, and uh, that would do the same thing. This little caret here is the P for props. And the first thing that I did was I set up the entire thing. So, here, let me clear this all out. I set up the entire thing as a master prop. Then, what I did is I just, well, here, let me show you. I'm going to click here. Set up the entire thing as a master prop that I show you right here. Um, I'm using these non-printing guidelines to help it line up evenly. Basically, each section is text. Okay, so for each one that I want to show up, I'm just putting those in. And now the next thing that I need to do is I need to copy this and paste it. So I'm going to paste it down here. So I've left the master just in case I need it again. And I'm going to copy and paste this each time that I need this. So let's just uh, do the setup for the girls here. So I have one here. And I know that I need one, two, three, four, five of them. So, got one, two, three, four, five. So, now I'm going to start at the end, since that will have everything that I need. And first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change the label and I'm going to give it the label G5 just so that I know that's the number fifth step or number five here. So then the next thing I'm going to do after I do that is I'm going to click on these things and just delete everything that I don't need. In this case I don't need any of the boys stuff so I'm going to go ahead and delete all of those, and just leave this as it is. Now I go to the one previous, let's call that G4, and once again, delete everything that I don't need. Now at this point, technically, I could delete everything except this and since the previous prop is going to have this one and then the previous prop is going to have this one and the previous prop is going to have this one that would be fine because I'll show multiple props at a time but I don't have to instead what I can do is I can leave them all since these are all perfect copies and go from there so Again, continuing on, G3, where I delete everything but the first three. So the label is important so that I know which is which. You know, just by seeing this label, I can tell, okay, this one has all of them, this one has three of them. So, in effect, what it's going to do is I'm going to have G1 and G2. I'm not going to show that to you here, but you'll see G3 is like this. Then G4, it looks like just this reveals. And G5, it looks like just that reveals. So, that's pretty simple. I could do the same thing for the boys here. Let's call this B1. And in that case, I would delete everything that I don't need by clicking and hitting backspace or delete whichever kind of keyboard you have on the Mac it's labeled delete on the PC it's labeled backspace or you know if you've got a PC 
keyboard on the Mac. It's labeled Backspace. does the same thing. So you see how that's just uh, pretty simple. Um, and with props, they all stay up until you remove them. So I can have 10 props up at a time, no problem, just as you saw earlier. So let's get out of that and we now see that I have these new props down here, B1, G3, etc. But what I did was I also resized this so that it makes a lot of sense to me. I've got five possibilities uh, for each team. I know that the team on the left is the boys, so I've left them at the top. The team on the right is the girls. I've put them on the bottom so it's pretty straightforward so once again I can clear the props here and we can go oh girls are in the lead oh they're gonna go away with it no no the boys are trying to catch up no now the girls and the girls win so you see how how that would work that it's uh, pretty straightforward there um, and I put in a countdown timer got another video on how to do that so that's pretty straightforward um, I put in uh, a message to show the timer that's also uh, something that shows up in another video this is just a slide that clears everything else and then has this uh, transition right here so that it kind of wipes everything out of the way so you might be thinking uh, Great, Paul, what, what can I do with that if I'm not using that particular kind of game? Um, first off, I almost forgot about this variation on the game. So, again, we can go here, but let's imagine that instead of it being linear 1 through 5, it's like a hide-and-seek kind of game where each one of these is worth double points. So this is 10, this is 20, this is 40, this is 80, and this is 160, okay? So if they find this, and that's all they find, um, but the other team only finds these, finds these two, then that's 10 plus 20 is 30. The 160-point team wins. So let's say, let's just do that. So they found that, and I go, uh-oh, they found that, so I need to give the boys right-click, quick edit, go up here, and I will give the boys 160 points. So let me do that, close that, and hit this, and that shows up. Now, I right now I have a clear props on this, I need to get rid of that, so I'm going to remove Q, remove the clear props Q, so that every time that I show that up, it doesn't remove that. So, you know, I click this, right click, quick edit, um, then the girls get this one, so I right click, quick edit, change their score to 10 close that and show that up and you see how that shows up with just their one it didn't clear out everything so you can imagine different games that you could play with these techniques where you can either update scores by using the quick edit feature or um, just randomly show things depending on how they're doing it. So let's uh, take a look at some of those games that you can do this with. You can do it with Family Feud. Imagine that instead of those they were the survey results. You know someone says meat and potatoes and that's down here. Well that's the prop you use. You know, so Jeopardy, again, they choose a question. You reveal the question using a prop covering up the dollar amount.
connect for instead of words here we're using um, different colors and so basically again you set up your grid which I so you instead of these being words they would be uh, pieces and so you'd have you know like yellow and red and yellow on row one space one yellow on row two or row one space two etc so that would be much more complex but it is still possible to do it like that and the other one is concentration or the memory game and doing that you would have um, things that showed up and then they disappeared and then you needed to find the match and that showed up and it disappeared so you can uh, do that pretty well as well so you can really use this technique to create some really fun games for your children's ministry your teenage ministry and Quite frankly, adults love these too, so don't hesitate to use them as well. <clears throat> well, I hope it seems obvious now that uh, there's a couple of mechanisms that we can kind of use, perhaps outside of what Renewed Vision had in mind, to do nonlinear reveals and do some on the fly editing to update some things. If you like this content, I know you'd like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash newsletter and get a free subscription to my newsletter along with tips, tricks, and discounts on the products and services that I offer. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com. Go out and change eternity.